Why, hello there. If you don't already recognize my sultry voice, this is DJ Art of the High Score 510 Podcast. First of all, I would like to thank you for listening to our show. Second of all, I want to remind you with a shameless plug of our Patreon page. Join our growing community and help support an indie podcast. The perks of being a patron, you ask? Number one, you'll get our weekly quick hitters. Number two, you'll get feature conversations that are too hot for our regular show. And number three, we cannot leave out number three. Why, Jesus, we'll bless you. So go check out patreon.com backslash highscore510. And for the price of a tall pumpkin spice latte, you can help DJ Art get the newest choker from Claire. Wait, who, who wrote this? Who wrote, who wrote this? Seriously. That's fucked up, man. This isn't a choker. Is is real pearls, bitch. Regardless of which, we appreciate your support and hope you enjoy the show. You are listening to High School of Five and Where real talk is our vernacular. Attack the higher ups, Jerry. Attack the Michael B. Jordan. Oh, uh, Fox News. ESPN. Fox yeah. News. Yeah. You, yeah, you I can only this. keep it real. You I times up yourself. You, you'll be attacking yeah, don't, people don't, that next look, step. Yeah, don't even do that. Hold on. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like who? Who right. I Your whole yeah, BJ yeah. Nike idea, Jared, led you when Sam was talking to you about the legal the legal rights of copyright. Shout out sponsorship. Shout out sponsorship. You yelled at Sam. Tell him about you, you know pro step, bono step, lawyers. He's several and, steps behind. What and you said, I didn't know where Sam up. Now you called him a sandwich boy, Jared. Yeah, he is. Boy. You say, how do you know anything about lawyers, Sam? Just because you work at a law office, you ain't nothing but a sandwich boy. Go get me a roast we beef need... with Swiss cheese and extra roast beef with the side of go fuck yourself. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> you attack, you attack, and that was all this over BJ Nike. Let's just go. <laughs> this is all BJ Nikes, Jerry. Let's have that's what you should put on the list. BJ Nikes. We should be talking about that's you cool and your BJ Nike. <laughs> Pedro, I need a letter. Pedro, I need a letter. Well, well, wait a minute. We got we gotta have a special guest, so I'm gonna go with G. Mm. Wulala. Gucci game. Espacho, gangsters, and gulags. What's, what else starts with a G? Um. Jigaboo. G, that's a J, man. <laughs> no, no. That's a J. Gig, gig economy. <laughs> your, your favorite part, gig economy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the High Score 510 podcast. You can catch us at High Score 510 on the Instagram, YouTube, and the Twitter. Maybe not the Twitter, but check out Hipster Horcrux on the Twitter. And uh, email the show at highscore510.fans at gmail.com. And also, be sure. <laughs> How are you supposed to remember that, dude? High score. How are you supposed to even read that? High score. <laughs> dot fans at gmail.com. Also, check out our Patreon page to get exclusive content, um, bonus conversations, and our weekly cook hitters. Help support us on there so that Aaron can get his Peloton subscription and Pedro can get that Merlot Bro one. So we also can um, not be bought by some corporate sponsors. Because, uh, Cause I ain't gonna not say something because Pepsi tell me not to. Pepsi and my mama. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'd rather be bought out by some, some that's Jared's talk just to let people know. If Pepsi came to me and told me, hey Aaron, you can't talk about this one thing, but I'm gonna pay you this much a year and the money they got, I'm selling out. <laughs> I'm, sell, yeah, I'm selling out the I'm selling out like the rappers did in the Sprite commercial. Exactly. I'll be doing the show from my house instead of from this apartment with no with no no curtains. <laughs> and, and messed up blinds that, that they refusing to fix. Well, support us so that Aaron doesn't have to have that uh, existential crisis of selling out. There ain't no existential crisis. Aaron gonna sell out. I'm gonna sell out. Let me see him with that Taco Bell commercial. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> Pedro gonna sell it like Jerry Rice in that Popeyes commercial. Ooh, baby, I got Popeyes. 
you can sell out of it. Yeah, he, hey, a, he needs that money for his divorce, so I'm not I'm not mad. <laughs> if he need to he give us his free, so he needed his free. He needed his chicken free. wing. Hey, I'm all with it. <laughs> his hey. wife took him to court. It was like spread your cheeks and lift your sack. <laughs> <laughs> she took him to the cleaners. <laughs> well, uh, we are here with. Uh, this is Aaron Grayson, also known as AG3. I would say I'm coming at you fast, but I'm just coming. I'm just coming at you whatever speed I could get today. Uh, first gear, second gear, third gear is going. We're gonna treat that like fifth gear today. God, if you listen, hell. All right, and we are here with everybody's friendly truck driving captain, Captain P Funk. Um, been in quarantine so long, I'm starting to turn light skinned. Why don't you click your heels together three times and go back to Africa? I think Pedro on one of those Arizona version of quarantine <laughs> where they where they where they stay at home most of the day. I've been to I've been to two stores, Sam's Club, and I can't tell the other store because that's my chicken wing source. So uh, <laughs> not giving that up. And my name is Jared, aka DJ Art, with two T's for a double dose of that tink tink. The D is silent, so it's just chart. May white God bless you, Robin. Oh shit! See Pedro, 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 old old man enough to still have a big ass, loud ass landline. <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> and he also old enough to know not the mute. Hey, you disturbing my landline. podcast? Look, Tatiana, I'm on the podcast. Could you please don't call my home phone? <laughs> call, will you page me? Page me next time. She went to the store. Right on. Why is she calling a home phone? I don't even know. My, I have a home phone too, Pedro. I don't even know the number. Got some uh, some interesting topics today. We got some fun topics. I want to talk about this impeachment trial uh, number two a little bit. Talk about um, the best or the worst city in the sporting world to be in right now. But first things first, y'all. We got to talk about some fan mail. Shout out to our fans on the Instagram and the Twitter. Shout out to uh, Baylor the Great uh, BTG uh, on Twitter. Uh, he's going to come on our show in a couple weeks, but uh, he he had a response for our Super Bowl episode and said the worst fan is the person that stands in front of the TV, blocks half the people's view while holding a beer and yelling at the screen. <laughs> I think we all know somebody who's done that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why Super Bowl parties ain't shit. Shout out to everyone else. Uh, last week on last week's episode, uh, Ash Strong on Science, Soul Raider, Eight O'clock, Taco Pablo, uh, DTH, Tom, Dave, uh, Crystal, all the people that called in um, and and uh, shared their thoughts on the show. It was a lot of fun to edit. Uh, Fat Mac and all Fat Backs also called in. I'm trying to think. Anybody else call in? Those are, uh, oh oh oh. Thirty seconds with Jason J. Good. Called in, Jay man. Appreciate you calling in last week. Meet me at, at Antioch Oakley Pier, and we'll talk. <laughs> your boy, your boy, eight o'clock. Take uh, Jason <laughs> in Antioch Pier. <laughs> Oakley Pier. Uh, <laughs> that was a fun show. Anyways, um, but let's get to some uh, more fan mail. Fan mail. This is coming from Soul Raider. Shout out to the homie Gabe Soul Raider on IG. Uh, sent a question, and uh, the question is. Directed primarily at AG3, did the Michael B. Jordan Amazon Alexa commercial get you as wet as it did all of us? Hey, you know what? That's what he do to stay. You got to do what you got to do to stay relevant. You know, I'm talking about selling out, word out to Pepsi there. That's what he do, man. He uses he uses what he got to keep getting commercials. Yeah. Didn't he say that in one of the commercials? Sound like a fool. So uh, to answer the question, yeah, I, it didn't get me wet to answer the question. I mean, no, not close at all. In fact, uh, I watched it before the Super Bowl. Once it came to the Super Bowl, I didn't watch it at all. i tell you who surprised me, though, Drake. Drake in a commercial. That was actually pretty funny. After seeing the Michael B. Jordan commercial before the Super Bowl and then having the weekend halftime show, the weekend halftime show was so bad, I was praying that Drake would perform in, in the State Farm, State Farm shirt, polo shirt. <laughs> So to answer your question, the Michael B. Jordan, no, man. I'm sure it worked on a lot of other women. 
I think he took them uh, them blue contacts that he's wearing in that commercial and seduced Lori Harvey with those. The, the sad part is that I feel like the <laughs> Alexa speaker would do a better job acting than he that he does. Like you can go ahead and put Alexa in like half the roles, Fruitvale Station, other than the part where he died, where he got shot after he got shot. That was the best he ever did. The two times the best he ever did was after he got shot in Fruitvale Station. And I'm not, I'm not talking about directly after. I'm talking about a good three minutes after when he's just lying there. Same as Wallace, right? When he was just lying there. That's the was best. Was he the one that got did. shot in Hardball with Keanu Reeves also? You think I watched that movie Hardball, Jerry, by then? I was a grown ass man. If I, if I went to go see that movie Hardball, I, Jerry, I did not see Hardball. Let's just put it Keanu like Reeves was a grown ass man coaching the inner city kids. He's a grown ass man getting paid. I told you, if I get paid, I'll be in that movie theater. He was a grown ass man getting paid, man. I think I saw Hardball. By the time that came out, I was like 22 or something, man. I wasn't going to watch that shit. <laughs> but I tell you this Alexa would have done better as Killmonger than Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> and I'm talking about answering in the same Alexa voice, too. Not even, not even trying uh, to. I change. thought you was talking about the action scenes. <laughs> man that's the problem with black panther hey, i'm about to say something full pot all the black people about to get mad at me <laughs> the action scenes in black panther were not great the rhino part was good that was about it it was too much cgi and it was just all over the place and not because it was cheap cgi it was just just not great action scene like you want to see good action scenes go watch the winter soldier out of a marvel movie watch the winter soldier or even Endgame had great action scenes, and so did Infinity War. So I don't that, know why they didn't use on. the same, um, I guess, choreographer that they use. Because um, it's different directors, so you well, know the directors go. Disney should have looked, should have took charge of that. Kevin Feige, he, Kevin Feige, he's the one in charge of Marvel Cinematic well, Universe. They got to get every look, script approved by him. Well, look at look at um, Black Panther in Civil War. That yeah, was much dope. better when he when was he much came better, yeah. in. It was like wow. Yeah, yeah, everybody was like, well, and, and that was the like, Russo. That was the Russo brother. So the thing that yeah. Kevin Feige does is he tries to give each director like he, he they have to follow the guideline where the screen's headed. He ties in a big picture yeah, that right. he has to prove everything. But he gives director their own little independence to run and hire their staff and run those things because he doesn't. That's what makes him a little different, right? That's what makes him have each movie have a different feel. Um, you know, is that is that he does it that way so that each movie can have a feel like the directors. That's why Thor Ragnarok, uh, Ragnarok with T.T. Wati has that hilarious, humorous feel to it, right? And he hired his own people around to do those things. I agree with you. Yeah, I, I they should have used those others, but it's Ryan Coogler, man. I mean, he'd been working with Black Panther. He'd been working with uh, Michael B. Jordan for so long. He don't know. He don't. <laughs> Sometimes I think Ryan Coogler don't know good from bad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The him and Killmonger fight was not good. No, it was confusing. It was, you couldn't notice was, much. Yeah, it was, it was just, going on. It, it was, was like Yoda fighting with that lightsaber. He was just jumping all over the place. It was like that. Like this is it was Yoda. Yeah, Yoda found his fountain of youth with a lightsaber. Yeah, and start flipping all over the place and spinning and shit. Talking about like, a backward ass. <laughs> What, 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 Michael B. Jordan do? Kobe! Michael B. Jordan is casting a biopic about himself. Alexa walks in to audition for the role, Aaron. What would Alexa do? <laughs> hey, Siri. Who won Best Actor? Joaquin Phoenix won the Oscar for Best Actor for Joker in 2020. Did you get that, Jared? Yeah. Clip that. That's Alexa applying for Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Already did a better job. Already did a better job. <laughs> oh, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to take this off your hands. <laughs> Oh, Damn. Already a better job right there. Already a better job. Other quick fan mail from Vito the Dog on Twitter. A Reuters article uh, was sent to us and they wanted our opinion on the release of brown bears into the Iraqi mountains. Here is a photo of the release. So apparently there uh, are captive bears that people uh, capture at young ages and raise in their homes uh, in different parts of I Iraq. 
so there was a massive release of several bears uh, recently that left people scrambling for cover as the bear was released and began running around aimlessly. <laughs> Aaron, what, what was your first take when you saw this, uh, this article? <laughs> I think someone's lost their damn mind. One having a, like, why is there so many people there to release a damn bear, a wild bear? Oh, like, why is this, like, I don't know if no. you ever watch the nature shows when they really, like, rehabilitate them and release them to the wild. Like, it's always, like, you know, five people there. And, like, and, like, most of them are behind some shit, are in the car ready to fucking drive the fuck out of there, right? Mm -hmm. And there's, like, a couple there to open the cage and stand back. They stand back. They, like, hoping that it goes off for a walk. These motherfuckers were, like, in a soaker around it. Like, they were, like they were partying. Yeah, in the initial photo, 360 <laughs> degrees of people around the bear and you see the bear starting it looks like the bear is mid saunter or run and you see people turning and running away from the direction that the bear is going it's the crazy. crazy the crazy is everybody's reaction to it so mm -hmm. there's the, everybody behind it seems to be smiling like that motherfucker ain't running my way right look somebody mm -hmm. knocked over the, the tripod that the camera was on <laughs> and, and, and the one mm -hmm. dude that is that actually looked like the two dudes that look like the bears facing they run it after they got the most concerned looks on their face. Mm -hmm. The dudes with the mask on um, is looking back at the bear like, oh shit, why are he after me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got this camera, I got this, this ass camera. Mm -hmm. uh, these Iraqis look like they doing pretty well. They yeah. doing pretty well for themselves. This is like a, this, this, this is like high society. These are all they? clean shaven. Yeah, well, you don't, don't, see, don't always. Fades? They got fades, Pedro. <laughs> I know, but you can't take they show us on the news media. Right. They, they, yeah, they want us to believe that Iraqis off. are all living like a bunch of sand people. Yeah. <laughs> these dudes got more style than the rest of us, man. Got yeah. Jordan they, look they like they very westerner. They very right. western. And these dudes they got, got on the, the highest quality of uh snow gear. These dudes yeah, look like they back, go in the, the club back. He looks exactly. like he got on some Cartiers. That's Look at the saying. dude next to the bear. Look <laughs> yes. like he got on some designer Cartiers. <laughs> <laughs> they do. These guys are just up. All right, what's the best? I, I like the one guy who had his bike helmet on, like he rode his bike up there in the motherfucking <laughs> That's snow. That's what I'm trying I'm like, to like, why, <laughs> why are you up in the snow with a bike helmet on? Where's your bike at? <laughs> <laughs> Video. See, there's the dude with the backpack. See, look, he's oh, going over the one wall. One dude is strapped though with a big ass shot. Yeah. No, like, hold on. No door. wonder why they laughing. This dude, yeah. I didn't notice that. That dude got a strap on him. Yeah, he looked like he looked like he looked yes. like Trey Young's lighter skinned Iraqi brother. <laughs> yeah, the, the, with a lot more hair than Trey Young. <laughs> yeah, <I love> that. <laughs> that bear is not that big though. No, it's a small bear. It looked like it's, it's been mountain. Small brown bear. bear. Well, yeah, so apparently these bears are being uh, you know, captured, held captive, or held as kind of like pets um, and novelty. Yeah. Um, and so there's been a big push on how to release them. But the crazy part is like there's there is like some concern and argument about the method on how to release them because they're like, we're releasing them with all these people here when they should be acclimated for like several <laughs> months and and retaught and relearned on how to like survive on their own and be self-sufficient. Right. Yet yet with these big releases, you got like you got look at look at this photo. It's like at least 40 people there, all with their phones and cameras out, taking photos of it. And the bear looked like, he's like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. And I'm like, dude, they put him halfway. Look like he in between snow and some hot ass part. And one, like I say, it looks a little malnourished. So I'm like, don't they know it's winter time? They're above the equator. It's winter time, right? Because they at least fatten them up before they put them out there. Like, because he ain't a bit, there's a reason why yeah. they fatten up for winter time. It ain't as much food around. And they gonna mm. release this motherfucker out here Oh man, yeah. I feel sorry. Yeah, he, about he should be hibernating. Since he's been domesticated, he's probably lost all of his senses. Yeah. So yeah, like I you said, he leaves in the wild, he's not gonna I don't know how long that's gonna last. <laughs> Look, people think animals are silly. No, they know where they get fed. They don't yeah. want to leave wherever they're comfortable. Man, I got heat. They got heat at the house. Got it's cold out here. <laughs> oh, shit. this is the last one um that that got me was the breadsticks and the fish that they're feeding the bear before it leaves the cage um is not going to entice it to leave the cage i'm like no nah. exactly. <laughs> like you said Pedro, I mean, like, they, they know where they gonna get food at <laughs> yeah, I, ain't, I ain't gotta hunt i ain't gotta deal with no damn uh mountain lions so all of a sudden you just go feed me oh you gonna feed me i'm staying in this cage <laughs> 
do you think that they're doing the best, the the the, the most effective job of releasing their the releasing their bears back into the wild? <laughs> yes or no? I'm gonna go with the no, but you know what, man? You know what? They maybe this is their way of learning. Maybe they have to fail a couple of times. You know, everyone acts like PETA just around and loving people, loving animals and know all the right answers forever, right? No, people yeah. have to fail. People who have to try to rehabilitate, you know, they in Iraq, they trying to do the right thing. Let them do it. You know, I'm not gonna judge them. Yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna judge I'm gonna laugh at them, but I ain't gonna judge them. I think they're failing because uh, we were talking about this the other day, Aaron. They're feeding mm-hmm. it fish and they're dropping off in the Iraqi mountains. Now I'm not saying that they got <laughs> streams with fish there potentially. But those are big but, ass, fat ass, like farm raised fish they feed me. Yeah, right yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> and, and and if you haven't taught it how to catch a fish, like this motherfucker be like, man, I really love that yeah. fish, but I can't find the motherfuckers. I don't even know where you get them from. I was like, which markets they fish. go to? <laughs> they gonna be looking for humans to find the fish. That's where you think you get fish from. Yeah. yeah. Put it this way, they're gonna be right back in the neighborhood. And they're going to walk up to somebody and be like, hey, y'all got any cages and some fish? In news this week, the second impeachment trial of Donald J. Trump occurred. And it ended in an acquittal as the Democratic House managers were only able to get seven Republicans to cross party lines and vote to convict him. They needed a two thirds majority. So they essentially needed 67 votes to convict him. However, they only got 57 with 50 Democratic votes and seven Republican votes. What were some of the highlights from this week's trial to you or what what was being said by the defense or the prosecution in this trial? You know, I mean, highlights, I didn't really see it as that way. Like I'm watching a sports event, like I'm waiting to see highlights and low lights. Oh, say, what stood just, out to you? What stood out to you then? Um, you know, I got to see the 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 other release footage from the insurrection, uh, I wouldn't call it an insurrection because an insurrection seems like it's a little more organized than that bullshit was. I wasn't surprised. Nothing really stood out because nothing surprised me by it, right? Like I, I've been done being surprised a long time ago. I'm trying to find a lady's name that said she was a... I can't find it. She was afraid of um, to go against the vote. I think she said she really wanted to vote to convict him, but it was, she was afraid because she's she was getting death threat letters or had got them before, and she didn't want to go through that through her life again. Mm-hmm. But you, if you're a senator or anybody, mayor or district leader, whatever it is, you're going to get death threats. You're a sports star, you're going to get death threats. Everybody gets the threats that, that are at the top of, or, or in leadership. Yeah. Now, them being afraid of Trump, I don't know if he's got a backdoor to the mob or he's sending letters or some kind of third party, but nobody in during this is ever, and I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting him to be convicted because we got a bunch of Democrat pussies and we got Republicans that kiss a lot of brown, they brown, they brown nose and they bunch of bitches. And uh, so I wasn't expecting any, anything different, um, but somebody's got to start showing some courage. A great leadership becomes courage. We have no, nobody with courage in the Republican Party. We all have nobody in courage in, you know, it's only the few in the Democrat Party, I guess they call the progressives. And the only people that show any type of courage is when it's coming, making votes for the people or are going against the grain. The rest of these cats are in it for corporate. And if somebody told them at the top or anybody who's making a lot of money told them at the top, hey, just, just let this guy go. We'll deal with him some other way. Uh, we don't want we don't want you to store in a public pardon because we need to have some type of control so we can, you know, make rules and laws so we can keep getting this Reddit money. So I wasn't expecting anything like like Aaron said. This is just a show. It's just for television. It's just a, a slap on the wrist. Just the trial alone. Like, hey, Trump, look. Okay, you can you can do some things that we like that we took advantage of. Something like other stuff, the insurrection. Look, we will try you for it. Get away with it. We will try you for it. Don't do it a third time. This is just a show. Here's the thing. It had really. What what could he lose at this point? He's been, he's already no longer in office. I mean, there were, right. what he can lose is so small. It really didn't matter. I didn't mind them doing it because, you know, it's a part of the process. And sometimes you just go ahead with the processes of the law. But even if they found him in, you know, they, and he wasn't acquitted 
of it. It still wasn't, it's not a criminal trial. It's nothing like that sort, right? And the little yeah. bit it was to gain off of it isn't much, but it's a process that you go through it and just get things out in the open. I like the getting things, just put things out there. It's about putting things. It's the reason why we have a lot of these congressional hearings. No one's going to go to jail. When MLB had the congressional hearing about the steroids era, right? And they brought all the former players and the commissioner and Donald Fear and the players union. It's about getting, the congressional hearings are about getting the information out there. There are some repercussions that can happen from a congressional trial, but for me, this, and I could be wrong, but for me, the more important thing is that the information out there. I mean, I lived through the Oliver North. I was old enough in the middle school to remember uh, what that was about when, uh, be, no, it was right before I was in middle school. It was the end of elementary when the Oliver North and the whole- Wait a minute, uh, Oliver North? Scandal. I thought that was I thought that was Oliver Brown back in LA that uh, got, got caught stealing that uh, money from the uh, Rexall <laughs> drugstore. They ain't gonna have no congressional hearing for anyone that steal money for a store on Florence Avenue, Pedro. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> no, no. Well, but uh, the Iran Contra scandal, it's about getting the information out there. For me, that's the bonus. I, all the other stuff that happens, it's not much, right? The, the, if there are some repercussions off of it, it's never much. It's about getting the information out there. Yeah. And to me, that's what this did. It got the that's information what, out there. That was one mm-hmm. thing that I heard was that regardless, he's been impeached twice and never happened before. Um, and with that, it's going to always follow his name uh, in his presidency. So, and this information will, is now like, you know, open to the public. It's like all the stuff that they put together from the videos and the accounts from the different Congress people and senators who felt, you know, that they were actually, you know, threatened uh, people that are in our highest uh, forms of government who, you know, are elected officials, you know, it humanized the, the fear and, and the, the reality of that day. Um, so that hopefully, you know, for future situations that doesn't happen again, but also it's understood that this is this is the extent and the reality that of what occurred that day. Well, yeah. look, Jared, Jared, let me on that point. We we had a president that got convicted and impeached for having irregular, irregular sex in the office. And that wasn't so long ago. That was not a regular sex. All that was, a was regular a BJ. sex. Man, got a BJ was, in the office. That is not you know, a regular. That was a you one sided you know sex. Act. We can get Monica Lewinsky to be our spokesperson. Bro. We need to. But that was My blow so job Nikes. <laughs> you brought it up on a podcast. Here we go. <laughs> but it's 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 it was so far removed just on ethics alone. Like people had to have this. Oh, we need to, even the Republicans used like, oh, we have to have you have to have a uh, what do you call that class about yourself to be in politics. You have to have. Uh, this moxie, uh, you got to show some type of uh, experience in leading um, uh, people in, in the government. Now we got a show. Now they turn this into a Fox News Network show that's kind of like a reality show that where nothing makes sense. While we're doing all this, we're just passing laws to enrich ourselves. One thing that that I think stood out to me was the defense team was obviously like these fools took the case like on one week notice. And then what they did was make a compilation of like Fox news videos of, right. <laughs> of democratic uh, leaders okay. saying, using the word fight, because that, that was the key word that they were hearkening on. And they, they, they were just not very well organized, but at the same time they did their job. All they had to do was prove enough doubt and not screw the pooch. He, um, look, let me tell you something, Jerry. He didn't need me lawyers at all. This was a this was a complete <laughs> show. He could have been pro bono. He didn't need lawyers because it wasn't much to be done. It wasn't he much to say. Sam it was a Johnson vote. representing them. It was a yeah. vote. Shout out sponsorship, sandwich boy. Shout out sponsorship, sandwich boy. And, sandwich and, boy. Go 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 defend me in this impeachment trial. And here's the thing you got to remember is that it comes down to a vote between Republicans and Democrats, and I think it's also about there's a lot of people in no matter what side they are. They don't believe in like when we've had impeachment votes before, some of them are like, I don't believe that this would be the best for the country right now. Right. Or, mm-hmm. or what is this impeachment going to do? Like I said, you got to get out of it. It's the information. This show is more about this was about information, getting it out there. All congressional hearings it's about information like the story there. Why did they bring Sammy Sosa and all these fools? None of them are going to face criminal trial. It was just about getting the shit out there. He yeah, should have had Sammy Sosa represent him. Yeah, he represented, I don't speak no English. <laughs> I don't speak no English. I'll speak <laughs> fine in that commercial. Boy, 
two oh, yeah, years man. ago, but now I forgot it. If, if I was Donald Pepsi Trump, money, mate? is it Pepsi paying me, man? I don't speak no English, man. <laughs> if I was Donald Trump, I would have showed up in blackface. <laughs> I, you would have had Sammy Sosa in blackface if he was Donald yeah, Trump. Yeah, Sammy Sosa could wear blackface. Because that's, that's what I was getting at. <laughs> no, no, Sammy Sosa had blackface over the white face. <laughs> that's why. That's what would be funny. Not, not, uh, not, not that he took all the stuff off. He put blackface over the new white face. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it, one thing that really got me was that there is just like the non-constitutionality of it. It's not constitutional. And that's something that really frustrates me because, and this is why Mitch McConnell, who's, you know, I was chatting with my brother RCO too about it. And he was saying like, Mitch McConnell was the chess master at this. He just played the whole game. Even afterwards, he came out and said that Trump was responsible for the insurrection, essentially, you know, saying like metaphorically and like literally, he's like, like he literally like bred this environment and allowed it to happen. Which Mitch McConnell, you allowed him to do that. You were there, you know, advocating, allowing him to do whatever the fuck he wanted instead of speaking up and challenging him to, you know, be better. So Mitch McConnell, you're still complicit. But but he didn't accept the articles of impeachment. <laughs> yeah, he was the head of the Senate. He, he was the House Majority Leader. He knew that whatever he wanted to get through, as long as he had Trump happy and in good graces with him, he could get whatever he wanted to pass because Trump wouldn't veto it, right? But then when Trump was acting a damn fool as a senator and as somebody who can is controlling the House that can actually like you know change like the reason why you break up the the. The fucking government into three parts, legislative, judiciary, and executive, is so that the power isn't too concentrated, which Trump was trying to over-concentrate his power, right? Those are the checks and balances. And he didn't do anything to check that power that Trump was abusing for the for for certain uh, stretches of his of his presidency. So he is complicit because you are the leader I, of the legislative. I'm branch. not gonna hold him complicit no, of no, what no, happened he, that day, Jerry. No, no, no. Until that day after. They didn't say, oh, I can't see any falsehoods or, or any any cheat and stealing going on in this thing. They did it after the fact that when the shit hit the fan, instead of being preempted to be like, hey, like you're 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 doing some incendiary rhetoric. You've been lying about this or spouting lies without proof for the last month and a half or two plus months now since the election was in November. You know what I'm saying? Like he was doing this for two months. So yes, he was complicit in the fact that him, he is the leader of the legislative branch. He had the he had the House Senate majority. He didn't speak anything to say checks and balances. You are executive. Stop f- spreading lies. That's going to incite our c- c- country into being more divided. I'm it, saying, it I'm saying for the in part, not for the whole presidency. For the in part, what, what I'm, I'm saying I'm, is, I'm focused on the what happened that day. Uh, no, no, no. With the, the, the whole, insurrection. That, that was a build. Yeah, that was that was a build. A build up, a but I don't things. hold. I can't hold him complicit. Oh, yeah, I'm not incident. saying he's, he's solely responsible. Complicit is you took part in allowing that to happen. That's that's complicit. If you allow I mean, something bad to happen and you could have had a chance to step in and say something or stop it or separate yourself from it properly. The courts say, is hey. doing it. He could say, yes, yeah, stop the rhetoric. But what good is that going to do? That's the same. I mean, yes, he is the he Senate didn't. majority leader. It's still not. The courts is the balance. He could have came out. He could have uh, came that out. That thing, the, the, the courts, the judicial system, Supreme Court, all the court system is the balance. And they were balancing. They kept throwing out the frivolous lawsuits. They kept throwing it out. We had a balance. Yes, he could come out and speak publicly. But that's just fucking speech, man. I don't give a fuck about speeches. His well, actions. You see what the speech, he couldn't you see do what nothing the speech with led to, though. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. You see no, no. I'm to. saying I saw what the president's speech led to. Yes, I'm saying they, the courts were killing that. The problem was they, the no, insurrection no, no, no. isn't. They don't, those fools didn't follow Mitch McConnell. They followed Donald Trump. Right? Aaron, Aaron, no matter Aaron, what, Aaron, Mitch, Aaron. Mitch McConnell represented the Republicans. That actually, have some sense, right? Not no, those. No, not the Republicans. Those fools were stupid also, ass idiots. No, no. He, this is where you're giving too much credit to what they to what they do. You're giving them too much benefit of the doubt. And well, I that's because you want to give zero. Doubt. No, no, I'm I'm not somebody who's not gonna give them no benefit of the doubt. If somebody if somebody is is an abuser of something, and then after the fact they come out and say, "Man, I was wrong for that," but like, no, motherfucker, you still were abusing people, and you still had that, that shit come out. That no, that, hold on, that that's what you do with AP. No, 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 but dude, it doesn't matter. Like they had a chance in their conscience to make the right choice and say something to not allow this fool to continue to spread lies and continue to cite his. He base, was gonna spread which, lies regardless. It, but Aaron. Aaron, if you have all the Republicans, you have 50 senators under you. You have more than 50 senators because you had the House majority. You they have all 50. the other senators. They got 51 who, or Now whatever. they got 50. Now they got 50. But so they yeah, got 51, they had, 52. They had whatever. the majority. But, but uh-huh. regardless of which, you you represent the party that that your president is representing. And yes, you're always going to have your extreme views and you're going to have your extreme base. All right? Mm-hmm. But if you can also, there's a lot of people that, that, that were slowly being radicalized or you want to call it radicalized or just 
becoming more extreme because all they heard was the president, what he was saying. He's a Republican. He's speaking this out. And the courts, you know what I'm saying, all of a sudden, the courts are are, are corrupt now. You know what I'm saying? We, black people and brown people have been talking about how the courts have not been, you know, blind to blind to the law and, you know, harshly punish people of color and poor people way more than they do uh, affluent white people. We've been telling you that there's some issues with that. And that, what, what do these crazy white people do? What do these crazy Trump supporters do? They take that same narrative that black people and brown people have been asking for support in, and they say, yeah, these people have been saying it, so they doing it to Trump right now. That is how per fucked up in the mind that shit is. And nobody with what you would consider sense in the Senate, nobody with sense in the legislative branch came out and said, hey, this is not happening. Stop saying that. This is not happening. We are not finding anything that supports what our president is saying. And unfortunately, we have to distance ourselves from our president's rhetoric and our president's stance on this because there's no stuff, nothing to support that. They did it after the insurrection happened. The Super Bowl happened last week. I guess my question is, what was the one thing that stood out the most to you from the Super Bowl Sunday? And then the second question is, Tom Brady, now with his seventh ring, and somebody had a meme talking about he had more rings than Jason Pierre-Paul has fingers, which is fucked up. That's fucked up. <laughs> that's really fucked up. <laughs> like, that's fucked up. But uh, it was a meme I saw. Oh, Sounds come on, man. Podcast really for retweeting up. that meme, bro. I was like, bro, that's, that's fucked, fucked up, man. That's fucked up. <laughs> uh, um, but is Tom Brady the greatest American athlete of all time, in your opinion? I'll let Pedro go first. I'm over here looking okay. at him. hoops, Nikki Hoops Alexander real quick. <laughs> She's still looking good? Still looking good, man. Still looking yeah, let's, good. let's talk about Nikki Hoops too. Alexander. Single too. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's see, see how many DMs we can put in their uh, mailbox. Shout out to Hoops from uh, Flavor of Love. Flavor Flavor of Love. Come on our show. In the DMs. Mm. Yeah, so what I, I noticed about Tom Brady is, or the Super, well, Super Bowl Sunday, the most announced thing was uh, during the game, started the game. I, like I tell, I told all y'all, I had I had a bad feeling about Sunday. I was like, something just don't seem right. It's funny how God works and how the Spirit runs through you, and how things turn out to be true when something's bad. You have something bad in your feeling, and that bad feeling was penalties. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew them flags was going to come flying. There was an interception that was overturned. There was some holding calls on plays that were that, that were against Kansas City that was kind of awkward. It was like, oh, that's that that's that feeling I had. That's the pit I had in my in my stomach. They want this man to go out with a bang. They yeah. want him to carry that that trophy. We need we need something. We need a symbol. Now I'm gonna bring Aaron's gonna love this because I'm gonna bring race into this. Before the white quarterback is um, known as a thing of the past, the pocket present quarterback is a thing of the past. They wanted to show, hey, this is our last hurrah. Hey, look here, white kids. You can still stand back there and throw that ball. You can still be great and you be great. You don't have to run all over the field and do this and run these options. You can still be great. Just practice. Learn, go through your progressions and be like Tom Brady. That was a sign of showing the great white American quarterback will always be here. He's the American this dream. Is their, this is the American dream. Just like they made America he, great again with that. He said, hey, look, he sat back there and he was delivering that ball. They had a better game plan. Let me, let me not take this away from I'm not taking nothing away from Tom Brady. Tom Brady practices. He studies. He knows where what defenses are doing and all the time. You can't blitz Tom Brady. Well, you know, years ago, you couldn't blitz Tom Brady because he'll pick you apart. They were just showing a sign. Look, hey, man, this man is here. We're still an elite athlete. We still belong. You can still have this dream. Don't they don't want these darkies, the these darky quarterbacks taking over. They, right. And that was, that was the question of the day I wanted to ask a couple uh, months ago, but uh, I didn't get to it. But is the – is is this the last vestiges of the great white traditional quarterback? Uh, are we seeing it in the NFL as we've seen more and more undersized no, uh, no, well, white see, and black quarterbacks uh, playing well, quarterback well, you now can getting see drafted like Josh Allen. I you mean, do you see who's the number one, who's going to be the number one draft pick in a couple of weeks? Mm -hmm. And do you know how tall he is? 
No, no, but I'm talking. I'm talking about like the the, the pocket passer, the big tall. I, like I said, like, do you know how tall Trevor Lawrence is? But that motherfucker can run. I'm saying the athleticism is being harkened. They want more. They, they want. They want more, but they also finding tall white guys who can run that are that right? are really really good athletes. Even yes. Justin Herbert, so, really good athletes. They're fast. Even Daniel, Daniel, the dude from the Giants, Daniel, whatever. He, you saw how fast that motherfucker was before he started oh, tripping he, on his own feet. Jared Allen's an excellent out. <laughs> Jared, yeah, Allen's Jared Allen's fast. good out. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, mean, I uh, don't think it has to do with more of the, uh, you know, like you're. They're going. Josh, they're yeah. leaning towards more athletic yeah. quarterback. Back yeah, in the, the athletic day, quarterback. Back in the, the day, there were tall athletic white guys, and they would pay the option, right? And they would play the option. They would go to option quarterbacks. They like running. So they would go to option. Now with now we're seeing college football having more of like options with more passing in it now. You're starting mm-hmm. to see those tall athletic white guys who normally wouldn't make it in the league either because they couldn't throw. They're, they're throwing more. They're throwing more in high school. That's also another difference. Usually a, someone like a Josh Allen would go to high school and unless he was from like the Valley schools, you know, he wouldn't throw the ball 50 times a game, but now in high school, they're starting to throw the ball more. So now with his athletic ability, he, they have a more throwing talent. You're seeing a, a premium put on, are you, are not even at, on how big and tall you are, but how athletic you are as the quarterback yes. position. And so Tom Brady, the Tom Brady, the Philip Rivers, the Eli Mannings, the Peyton Manning, you know, even, you know, Drew Brees was, was kind of an anomaly when he was, cause he was shorter, but like those guys, who are the pocket passers who are purely pure pocket passers. You're starting to see less and less of that emphasis in the college game, in the pro game, and even the way they're drafting the pros now, which is interesting to me because they've drafted in the last three years, they've drafted two guys who are less than six feet tall, basically, and that are athletic in Baker Mayfield and, and your boy um, in Arizona. Uh, Tyler Murray. You got these guys who are, who are way more short and, squ- uh, and, and squatty, but are able to move around and, 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 and be a little bit more mobile being drafted number one overall, which is, is crazy to me. Um, don't tell, but yeah. Don't, t- don't tell John Elway that because he wasn't drafted that way. John Elway wants to dra- draft another Brock Osweiler. <laughs> which is <laughs> like, weird because he, get a he, six was, foot eight dude that he can't was ridiculously <laughs> athletic, which is weird because he was ridiculously uh, athletic, but he, he loved baller. the hype part. He was a baller, yeah. Yeah, yeah he could play yeah. all kinds of different sports, but then he kept yeah. drafting these tall guys that looked a certain way and they had strong arms, but they, they weren't good. That's why he had to resign from being president. But anyways, um, Let's get back to the topic on hand. A, a, uh, Aaron, what is the, what was the, your takeaway from Super Bowl Sunday? The thing that stood uh, out to you most? You know what? It went so three weeks ago. The New York, or, excuse me, three days before Super Bowl, the New York Times put out an article and they said expect this Super Bowl to be determined by flags, right? And and I mean, I wasn't surprised. I don't think I, I'm not one of these people. They're, I'm not a conspiracy person. Whatever happens, fucking happen. Even if it was, even if I find out years later it was a conspiracy happened, it happened, it happened, oh well, right? Like I don't I don't like thinking theoretically. I like thinking theoretically on getting for the future, but not in the past. The past is when you get caught up in conspiracies. So this is my thing. The reason why they said that, they came with empirical data and it just said like the Tampa Bay, especially during their run, the penalties were obscured one way towards Tampa Bay. Well, I wasn't shocked and I, it just ruined the game for me. Even in blowouts in Super Bowls, all these past years that Super Bowl's blown out, the first half is always close. The first half is usually close. Even when the Redskins blew out, excuse me, the Washington football team blew out the Denver Broncos back in the day with Doug Williams. The first half was exciting. When Green Bay blew out the Patriots with Bill Parcells coaching the Patriots and Brett Favre led Green Bay, you get exciting first halves at the very least, even in blowout games in the Super Bowl. There's always exciting first halves. I feel like the referees took away that excitement up. They took all the air out of the building with some of those calls. It was pretty bad. I mean, I don't think it would have changed. To be honest, the Tampa Bay defense balled out. I think Shaq Barrett played well enough to win the MVP. Um, Tom Brady does this. He doesn't do anything crazy exciting. He does whatever it takes to win, regardless if it's a Super Bowl where he has to hand off the ball 35 times, if it's a Super Bowl where he throws a bunch of nine-yard passes, right? A bunch of, excuse me, a bunch of three-yard passes, right? Or a Super Bowl where he, you know, throws a bunch of screens and just hits running backs. He does whatever it takes to win. He wants to be the winner. He wants to be that. He likes winning. If you're a winning team and you play the quarterback position, you're going to be looked at that way. And I feel like Tom Brady cares about winning. So we look at him as his greatest. Is he the greatest athlete? Hell no. Nah. Bill Russell no. has 11 rings. I love that. Bill Russell tweeted out a picture of all his with him holding all his rings. He couldn't even fit it on his fucking fingers. 
right? <laughs> and I, it's just so funny how we forget that. Like we were like, oh man, now Tom Brady passed up Jordan. He's the greatest athlete of all time. For me, it's two things. What are we looking at? Are we looking at that they dominate their sport? If they dominate their sport during their career and they dominate and they won, and I mean, they truly dominate. They're the best at their position every, t- every time they stepped on that court and every year, then that's Jordan. Yeah, so, so, so Tom Brady, you know, I, I agree with you, Aaron. I think Tom Brady is one of the great Amer- American athletes of all time. But, He's but a good yeah, American if, winner. If, if, if you're going, yeah, one of the greatest winners of all time, you could argue maybe he's the greatest winner of all time, but you still got to look at Bill Russell, no matter what, and people are forgetting that. And that, I saw the same thing yeah, with going by the interwebs, um, about championships, and I was like, yeah, if you're going by titles, yeah, he passed Jordan. But Jordan never caught up to 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 your boy Bill Russell. So we want to talk about that. Eleven like, but Bill titles, Russell, twelve years. Yeah, what about I think, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar got Kareem, six titles. Yeah, he got yeah. And so, how many in high school and college? The, oh, yeah. He he might be the greatest basketball player if we count their whole career, because yeah. he basically <laughs> won at every level and never lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never lost. Yeah. <laughs> never lost. He won at every level and Kareem. had the most unstoppable jump shot ever. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think uh, Tom Brady, though, is now in that conversation for sure. He probably was already in the conversation, but now, you know, getting the seventh and setting the bar so high for the football. Um, my conspiracy brother in me, you know, I talked about it on the podcast a little bit, though, is that this, this was like Pedro said, the penalties, the penalties, they wanted to make sure he ended up on top because they want to have like the same reason why they like well, the Kardashians won't let Ray J fall off and become a nobody, right? Ray J's got to stay relevant. <laughs> you you gotta like no matter like whoever your pinnacle is, you have to set up. All, set up Ray J can set, go irrelevant right now, and they'll still be no, on top. No, 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 they won't because he is the, he is he's the genesis of their. Uh, Just because you uh, genesis don't mean you continue they they they. No, because because if you there's are a, there's, up, a, there's, your there's a generation around that don't even know Ray J's tied to them. I thought Ray J was uh, relevant from that um, live performance he did on BDT 106 in Park. <laughs> he was breathing in the mic. He, uh, we got to find that clip. He was breathing in the microphone dancing, and it was bad. <laughs> uh, you find that clip and send it to me. Um, he was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute! It was he hilarious. He was I was like a boy. He, he went was on smoking. Show. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, no, well, well, back back to Tom Brady. Well, I think is the the NFL. They're like, we can get somebody who sets a record that's almost unattainable for any quarterback in their career. Everyone's gonna want to chase it. They're gonna always be a talking point. He's, he's gonna go down in football lore. You know, you always have football lore. As when I was younger and I watched football, there was always the greats who had a certain lore about them for what whatever their exploits were, whatever they were able to achieve. And then from there, you always compared other people to it. And Brady was already kind of at that point, but this now sets the bar at a point where like nobody is gonna talk about you and how great you can be unless you're comparing it to this this almost unattainable, this super special yeah. benchmark, uh, um, hallmark. And so people are going to like always harken back on that. And it's going to be in the, it's going to slowly become just part of the next generation's, you know, say understanding and vernacular of the sport. And that's good. That's good for business. That's great for business. If people are going to compare it to you and this, that, and the other. Uh, the, uh, but the one thing that stood out to me the most from the, from the thing was, um, was the, the fact that I found out that DoorDash spent almost, uh, almost $6 million <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> $6 million. Yeah, on, yeah almost six it's million. It's 5.5. I saw another thing that said $7 million, but $5.5 million for their Sesame Street commercial to talk about how they were donating $1 million, up to $1 million. <laughs> so what did I miss? What did I miss? Houston, we have a problem. This past week, J.J. Watt was released by the Houston Texans per his request. Um, there's speculation as to where he might go, but my question to you guys is, is Houston the worst sports town to be in or be a fan of currently in America? Um, if you think back in the last couple of years, you had the scandal with the Astros. George Springer has left via free agency. He isn't their best player, but he's one of their young prospects and one of their best players. But then also you have the Rockets who fell apart, Westbrook left and demanded to be traded. They traded him. And then shortly after that, Harden uh, became disgruntled and demanded to trade, held out and, t- and became toxic until the point they traded him. Then you have J.J. Watt, who is now released. And and let's don't forget, they traded your boy DeAndre Hopkins for a bag of peanuts and three broken players <laughs> last year. <laughs> um, and, and then with all that that has been happening, 
Deshaun Watson, the only real star on that team that could potentially buoy that 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 sinking ship, has been demanding a trade and has wiped himself clean of any affiliation to the Texans and is still demanding a trade. So my question is, is with all the lost talent and the fall from grace that these teams have um, seen, is Houston currently the worst sports city? They're not the worst. They're just having it down. They're having a bad period right now. Um, mm -hmm. It just, it's just saying, you got to remember that they're just removed from cheating their way to a MLB title. Now, what we have in Houston, the problems we have in Houston, in Houston, we have a problem is when it comes to the Rockets is that all, you had all the changes going on. You got the owner there <laughs> losing all the money in his, uh, in his businesses, restaurants during COVID. So <laughs> they're not, they're not as bad. They're not as bad as you think they would have been. They got a, a great coach in mind and Steven Silas, he's, uh, he's actually doing a pretty good job. They've been competitive in these games with a diminished squad. So it's, it, it actually looks like they made the right hire and look like they can you know, make a move out of this. Now with Houston, when it comes to their football team, this, there was, they wasn't really on, only high they were on is when they had JJ Watt winning these def, defensive awards. And then they got Deshaun Watson and Hopkins, uh, Make, getting these stats. They never was really winning. So they never really was a serious contender. Now they have ex exceptional tower with J.J. Watt and Deshaun Watson Hopkins, but they wasn't a good franchise to begin with. They were just copycatting. They didn't have any progressive ideas. They never was in the right direction. Houston Rockets was closer to that because they had a, a substantial superstar that actually made it to championship games. Um, you know, and although he had failed at so many points, they were close to, there was close to beating the Warriors. But when you don't have any post players, uh, you don't have any, any skilled players down low, you can only expect so much out of a three point shot. The design of the, those two sports teams were in the wrong space. The Astros, on the other hand, they right there with it, they knew how to cheat right. They were doing all the things right. So we, we don't really have a problem in Houston, per se, like if you were a city like, um, I don't know. Um, I, I know. Charlotte, Atlanta. I, that's, what, that's what I was waiting for. Yeah, that's my vote right there. Those teams have a problem. Although Trey Long, you got, you got the have a major problem. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Uh, Jared, I don't know. Houston, yeah, they're in a bad rut, but they're also a major market, right? <laughs> Like, that was how they got James Harden. That's how they built the team. When James Harden first got to Houston, they were winning. Don't forget, they resembled a normal NBA team. What it's supposed to look like is just that they catered to James Harden more and Daryl Morey and his stupid saber metrics and his advanced st stats that they turned into this three-point ridiculousness. Russell, Russell Westbrook won it out because he didn't like the environment when he got there. He said there was no accountability. And part of that was James Harden. He was the one, and that's his friend. So I can't stay working with a friend. You know, when you're working with friends, you need to have accountability for both mm -hmm. ways. And mm -hmm. and he felt like it wasn't there. So he had, that's why he would get pissed at the, uh, you know, when they had film sessions. So that he was the first one to man out because he wanted to just to leave and go. He was like, I've already played somewhere that had accountability. This place don't have it. I'm it sounds like there's no accountability in any of those three major sports teams, though, when you think about uh, it. Like well, the they're all different. They're all yeah, different. Yeah, the accountability <laughs> in the Astros is like, hey, man, we're going to fire AJ Hinch and, 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 and Alex Cora because they was, because because we knew they were doing the some shit. We, fault. Yeah, and then, the and, then, and then you think about Bill O'Brien, there was no accountability because they decided to give him GM responsibility yeah, while no. being a mediocre coach. <laughs> you are right. You are right. There was like, no you a mediocre but... coach. You know what you need to take on your plate? Something else that you don't know how to do. <laughs> but it's still like... their their non accountability still led to results, right? Houston Rockets were one of the team you could say during this little run was the Golden State's number one rival, right? Was yeah. the Houston Rockets during this run? The Houston. Astros, while they had no accountability either, they got to two World Series 1-1, right? And they cheated their way through it, but oh well, they got their results, even though there's no accountability, their results worked. And, and let's face it, remember, the Houston Astros, they tanked okay. <laughs> for three years. Part of that was the stupid baseball rules that allow you to get, get more draft picks. 
tanks when you're one of the worst teams. So they tanked and they built this this team up that was good. They were probably good enough to win the World Series without cheating, but they did. They cheated, but they got one, right? The problem was the accountability only fell on the manager and assistant manager and the general, the coach and the, and the, uh, and the general manager because the commissioner made a deal that as long as the players told him what happened, they'll get, you know, <laughs> they'll get immunity. They wouldn't face any, yeah, no repercussions. Yeah. No repercussions. Now, the, their biggest problem in Houston is the Texans. Bad owner. Don't forget who said the inmates are running a prison. Not even didn't even use the quote right. He made the quote worse than what it is. He made the quote worse than what it is when when he when said, they started kneeling and he, he said, said the inmates are running, running a prison. wild. You niggas are crazy. He, he had the problem. He dies, which renews a lot of people's faith in God. And then the son takes over, and what does he do? He gets Bill O'Brien all this power, who's running the franchise to the ground. For some reason, his son is sold on Bill Belichick. The problem was the narrative of Bill Belichick messed him up. Everybody keeps hiring Bill Belichick people for different jobs, and they keep failing. They hired Bill O'Brien, gave him all this power, and he failed. He failed. He got rid of all the draft picks, ruined their future, didn't really make the team better. And then here's the worst part about it. They finally fired Bill O'Brien. Romeo Cornell's there to be the fall horse because, you know, interim coach, we knew they were going to pick. They don't interview the right people. They get a general manager and, a, and then a, a head of whatever, the other role, to a guy that was a team chaplain, right? They hire an outside group, you know, one of those, like, uh, consultants that all they teams do when they're, whenever they're looking for coaches. And yeah, they hire a firm, and they make two recommendations – to run the team, to be the player, uh, the or vice president, the player, whatever it is, and general manager, they don't take it and hire a, a guy who didn't do shit with the Patriots. That's what Deshaun Damn. Watson said. I had enough. Then they don't interview your boy um, Eric Bieniemy the one week that he has a buy and they can. They don't do it. And then they finally hire a coach who is a black coach, but he and, and probably well deserving of a job years ago. But now he's coming to this difficult situation and it's just time to move on. I still don't think that a sports work city after saying all that it's Atlanta. It is Atlanta. <laughs> they have blown this <laughs> Atlanta. Where do we start, Jared? Since the Super Bowl, it's been really, they blew that 21 point lead. Atlanta. <laughs> the, the Hawks the are best young home, and promising. The Hawks are young and promising, but they're still, we know it's Atlanta, right? The baseball <laughs> team, was up three games to one to the Dodgers. <clears throat> All they had to do was win one game out of the last three. They blew it. They had a chance to win. They got robbed of home run. Atlanta's it. Atlanta's the team that can't hold a lead. They can't do anything right. They lost to the Cowboys, Jerry. How big was that lead this week? The loss to the Cowboys. Oh, yeah, they were down. Mm. They were up uh, by 20 some 20 They are up by 20-something points, and then yeah. they lost on a play that doesn't even work anymore, which is the onside kick, right? Those fools didn't even pick up the ball. That, I mean, that play looked like somebody was shaving points. It didn't no, even look you know, real. The problem with that is <laughs> they didn't know the rules. They, that's when that's when back that's yeah. when got, finally got Mike White, uh, whatever, not Mike White, the other uh, coach after Mike White, name? Gus uh, Johnson, whatever the dude that, that was a Seattle coordinator one time, defense coordinator, finally yeah, oh. got him fired. Was the fact that that play because it was an onside kick and you could tell they were not well coached. They had no idea. They treated it like a punt. They were backing away from it. And it's like, what the hell are they doing? Atlanta is the worst sports city. The team that's won nothing, hasn't won in a long time, has no results from it. At least, like I said, at least Houston Rockets were competitive, had a chance. Uh, the Astros won a World Series, went to two. They, they got nothing to show for it. Cutty Corner Shoutouts, Cutty Corner Shoutouts. Cutty Corner Shoutouts is the second we end the show on where everyone gets the floor to rant, complain, or just speak on something that's been on their mind. You could say something that has been negative in your world or something that you want to highlight that's been positive. Cutty Corner Shoutouts. It's time. It's, it's time. Cutty Corner. We're burning now. God, if you listen, help. Someone to bleed. <laughs> Aaron, do you have a cutty corner shout out? I do, I do. Uh, this one goes out to cancel culture millennials. Not all millennials, just the ones that's big on cancel culture. 
And the reason why I'm coming off this, because I got people in my own life who are millennials who are big on cancel culture. And some of these cancel culture millennials, the problem I have is they call out things that happened seven years ago, things that at the time, I don't even think that you could consider them even now time as anything of those that the heinous nature, but it was just in a way of like, time is up now. We're not taking this. This is how you used to act and we want you gone now, right? So, and they're quick to call for people's jobs or this and that for a director being an asshole on set. That's what directors are. They're assholes on set and they want these people canceled, but then I started realizing something. I understand it's easy for them to cancel actors and actresses and directors and people that they didn't grow up with. But there's one person that they just, it gets to me because they haven't canceled her yet, right? And it's one of their faves. It's one of their favorite persons that continue to barf bigotry rhetoric out of their mouth, right? And, and, and it's funny how everyone's so quick to cancel everyone else, but they're not quick to cancel this person. The person they seem to ignore is none other than the creator of Harry Potter and all his wizardom, right? And I'm talking about J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling has spit nothing but bigotry out of her mouth when it comes to trans people and has not held back and is not afraid to show it. Now, Jerry, you talk about Mitch McConnell or, or the Republicans staying silent and this and this is complicity. She's not trying to be complicit. She came out and said how she felt. And I'm like, dude, can we cancel this bitch? No, nah, they don't want to counsel. Millennials don't want to counsel because you know what? They grew up with Harry Potter. And if they were a little older, they read they read all the books. I know people who are feminists who read the books twice, seen the movies several times over, told me I should read the books and watch the movies. And that's not called for her fucking head. I'm not going after J.K. Rowling because she's a bigot. I know who she is. I'm going after you guys to look at yourselves in the mirror and think every time I'm sitting here fighting for this and fighting for this rights, but I allow someone just because they made the thing that made my childhood around and I allow her to continue because she's continuous speaking. This ain't like some shit, like she's some old ass motherfucker that's in her 90s now, right? Now some shit she said in the 40s. No, this is so uh, her, what she continually said. She is saying it nowadays, right? And no one has called for anything. What happens when you look in the mirror? I'm just wondering, you ain't got to tell me. It's a rhetorical question. Pedro, do you have a Cutty Corner shout out? Yeah, um, so I didn't uh, do the quick hitter on um, the Gorilla Cool situation. So I wanted to get back to that. What's the little lady's name? Uh, Tessica Brown. Tessica Brown. So my Cutty Corner shout out goes to being who you are, being natural. You know, a black woman. Um, be the first to tell you, um, I like a natural looking woman. I said I had a similar cutty quarter shout out um, uh, a couple of months back when women were clout chasing on Instagram. And I know you know, women have all these wigs and all these styles that like to be a different person, black women mainly like to be a different person. I don't know if anybody told you, but you're beautiful just the way you are. So stop showing out to the most. Don't glue any eyelashes on to your eyes. Your eyes are fine. And I'm gonna go after the man also for this, for, for chasing the clout, for chasing the fakeness, for chasing something that's not actually natural. It is, and I put this on the man too, because y'all go out and y'all try to find, you, you, you get this one made up broad that's it's all, it's got everything glued to her body and you put her on some type of pedestal like she's something special. No, you take that wig and makeup off, she's just, just a normal person. She's just a regular human being like me and you. Um, I love you black women in your nets. It's Valentine's Day. I want to see you. I want to see your skin. I want to see your hair. I want to see you take them panties off. All that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Damn. Pedro. Uh, Pedro, get no, that regular but, hotel yeah, sex just tonight. In this road, I just want to have that's regular sex irregular. with a woman. I don't think he ever had sex in a hotel. There's no <laughs> that's that's, that, that, that's the sex. kinkiest thing, Pedro, but man, this bed ain't this exactly. is a different kind of this bed. Is, I ain't never this felt ain't no bed. This ain't no bed. Christian bed. <laughs> corner shout out goes out to the democrats 
for not constructing their argument about Donald Trump and the impeachment in a way that was just going to just amplify the fact that that motherfucker failed his oath to office. The fact that he knew, and they didn't hearken on the fact that not only did this was, was, were his words incendiary, we know that, that's not debatable, but that is not the impeachable offense. The impeachable offense is that when he saw the Capitol being stormed while watching it on TV, seeing it on Twitter and, and enjoying it, they didn't hearken on the fact that he didn't call in the National Guard immediately. The fact that he preemptively and his secretary of state or whoever it was, secretary of defense, one, one of his people sent out a memo saying that the National Guard was not to be using certain tactics for the protest planned ahead. His team argued that th these were premeditated, premeditated people who, who attacked the Capitol, not the people who were at the rally, which is a lie, number one, but that it was premeditated. And they were planning to do this no matter what, without Trump's uh, lighting the fuse. That is a massaging and in a, in a, it's trying to step around the truth. He lit that fuse. He lit that fuse over soaking it in oil over the two months after he lost the election. But beyond that is that if it was premeditated, then you're admitting that Trump, who's the most powerful man in this country, who has who's most privy to information, and these groups, these alt-right groups that were premeditated and that were using forms of communication to figure out how they're going to attack the, the Capitol, obviously, they knew that they were planning to attack the Capitol then. Trump knew that there were two people that were going to Trump attack the Capitol, if you're saying that it was premeditated. He had the ability to know it. His staff had the ability to know it. Yet they sent out a memo saying no extra police force, no National Guard, no nothing. Yet when Black Lives Matter, which they don't they don't know what the Black Lives Matter are going to do. They're just worried about this big, darky presence that seems to be angry, upset, and we're afraid of black violence for some reason because we got to make sure we perpetuate the fear of black violence in this country. They had police upon uh, stormtroopers upon motherfucking National Guard standing there ready at the helm. But in this case, they didn't. That is an indication of him knowingly allowing that to happen. That's how he failed the office, is that he knowingly, his staff knowingly allowed these premeditated groups to inflict violence upon the Capitol, whether it was a group of five people, three groups of 10 people, or the hundreds of people that were there and thousands of people that ended up joining. That is where he failed his oath of office. That's where he failed. That is where he was impeachable. But also, fuck you, Mitch McConnell. But, but the fact of the matter is, is that the Democrats got played by Mitch, Mitch McConnell. And then when they argued about what was his real impeachable offense, they continued to miss the mark on what was, what did he do where he really failed his oath to office? Y'all keep fucking up because y'all are the Batman of this game. Now, I'm going to talk about this on another Cutty Corner shout out. And y'all, I'm going to prime y'all for this. But I'm going to tell you this, the corporate Democrats, especially the corporate Democrats, y'all are the Batman of politics. Well, that is our show, my friends. Any final words you guys like to have? Any final words? Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to Tuska Brown. You know, she raised a lot of money through her GoFundMe, through the GoFundMe that was set up. Mm -hmm. um, she raised like two, 23, $2,300. Uh, $23,000, right? And mm -hmm. she has pledged to donate 20000 of it to the doctor. He has a nonprofit for people who need reconstructive surgery, who can't afford it, you know, like either accidents or anything like that, birth defects. So that's what his nonprofit's for. She's donating $20,000 to that because of what he did to her for her hair, which is a very stand-up thing to do. She said she wasn't in this. She didn't put it online to make me to do anything like that, and she stood by it, so... Yeah, hey, focus that... on the negative. I want to focus on the positive part about it. Yeah, that's what I said. She look at look at her. Does she look like a bad looking girl? No. No, she, she was just trying to get her hair straight. I have no problem with you. Some people enjoy making themselves look better. That's like part of the day that they like. Deion Sanders didn't say look good, play good, play good, pay good, pay good, eat good, eat good, life good. He didn't say that. The first thing he said is look good. So even for him, he said he was telling you that's the reason why basketball players, football players, this is why those Chiefs got their hair cut by that barber. Like, mm -hmm. that's part of you feeling good, right? Mm -hmm. Like, when I got a clean haircut, my line good, I feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. I, that, then the rest of my life, I fall into place. Hey, that's look, it takes me, oh, take me over two hours to get dressed every day. I know, because like you got to get your good. hair and nails done. Because you, because you, you, you know Revlon bought my nails. <laughs> yeah. Pedro, Pedro dressed like a like the And One logo. It take him two hours to dress like the And One logo. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thank you for listening to our show. We hope y'all stay uh, stay healthy, stay blessed out there, and uh, continue to persist in these tough times. But you know, keep tapping in with us. Check out our Patreon, man. We, we love the support. We up to uh, we got we got five patrons now. So you know, shout out to Soul Raider, Highest Tower, uh, Mr. Wolf, uh, Soul, uh, uh, Mr. Wright, and Strong on Science. Uh, y'all represent for us. We appreciate y'all, and uh, we will leave you with this. And everybody's going to panic, run in the house, and there's going to be some bears out in the street. You know why? Because they're used to humans. Yeah, I'm so happy that, that this is the first time I've been able to see pictures of Iraq and people dressed up, people like, like this dude. He still looked like he well-shaven, wearing some traditional garb, but still, you know, every other picture we get through the news and shit like that. I'm happy mm-hmm. to see this. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that dude right there looked like Saddam Hussein, though. <laughs> That's man, man. Still alive. Wait, hold on, man. He's still hold alive. On. Hold on. We gotta he, get deep in there. He's trying to release his own Play the conspiracy the wild, music. Man. Play the conspiracy <laughs> music. We have found Saddam Hussein and he's still alive. <laughs> you get it here first on the high score five one on podcast. <laughs> he releasing his own bears that he found had Saddam Hussein. Hussein. Ow! I'm here. I ain't trying to be racist or say all 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 Iraqis look alike. The fat dude look like Saddam Hussein. Challenge him, he is not uh, dead. I don't know that dude in the murder. background right there on the left chair looked like a hipster with the blue sweater. He got his oh, yeah, his he side yeah. hair yep. part. They got hipsters in Iraq. See, that's the shit the news don't want to show you, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this I'm happy. You know what? They probably fell in with these bears, but at least I'm seeing a part of Iraq I never see. I want to know Iraq had snow, right? Mm-hmm. I want to know that. You got sad bears, but n- no snow. Yeah. In fact, I see snow. I didn't know that they had people that run, ride around with bicycle helmets, that they got hipsters. Look at that There's camera that, you got. Look at that camera. Look at the lens that, on that he's camera. He's got a thousand dollar camera. In he's his got head. A, with a two thousand dollar lens on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, two thousand dollar lens. What Somebody, is that? I'm trying to figure out what that that's is. That's a microphone. microphone. Somebody getting the hella close. Why is it that close? <laughs> they're, 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 they're probably the, the re- reporters for that. He was going to interview the bear. He was going to interview the bear, Jared. Why is he standing next to the bear with the microphone? I don't know. He was going to interview the mayor. doing some good investigation here. Look. Like, this guy, you got this guy right here. He, he's got a nice cardigan over a button up while wearing the snow pants and having some nice snow boots on. He got yeah. some nice snow boots on. You know, that's. And then the guy in the back. I didn't this know. This dude got a blue blazer and a turtleneck on. Dude, oh, that dude balling. <laughs> that dude looked like he probably worth. He looked that, like he worth a billion dollars. He looked like a billion dollar hedge fund. That dude looked like he drives a Maserati to a club in LA and walk out. It looked like he drove his Maserati up to that hillside, <laughs> covered in snow. <laughs>